Thanks for being here. Oh, my pleasure. You look fantastic. Why, thank you. Very nice to have you on the program. It's great to be here. You know what? You've been here before, but I'm and I've met you a few times in other places, and I'm struck still by how tall you are. Yes, and how tall you are. Thank you. Uh, and my pleasant odor. Um, <laughs> I no, wasn't going to mention that yeah, right. right away. But, but are you, you're about six feet tall, is that? Um, well, I wear heels, uh, but theoretically, As do I, I'm. Yes. yes well, <laughs> they help me. I'm yeah. uh, about 5'11, and, right. and you are. About 6'4, oh, you know. Six, if I get the pompadour working, it's another. Yes. It can be 6'8. It's eight. very nice. That's Thank good. Thank you. It's a little Next time beauty. I come on, I'll try to. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that. Little... It doesn't work for me either. Uh, you, but did you? Did that happen for you uh, quickly? Because uh, a lot of women complain about being tall. They don't. Yeah. They don't. They don't. Women don't like to be tall. I was very tall. Uh, I was this tall when I was 11, which was. Um, You're kidding. No, I was. And my daughter's 11 now, and I'm looking at her, thinking, God, she would have had to be my height, which is like twice as big as she is. But, um, and I had a very, very short mother who kept saying, "Oh, you're so lucky. You're tall. Oh, you're so lucky." Meanwhile, I always looked like the mother, you know. You were five. You were. You got five eleven at the. Uh, I was this tall when I was 11. Can you imagine? I was like two heads taller than any other yeah. girl, let alone boy. You know, no one would ever dance with me. And, you know, poor me. But you know, it was. Right. How right. about you? Were you a quick grower? Did yeah, you... I was. Well, I had the worst possible scenario, which was I was short, like through most of high school, and then literally over maybe like a three-month period, it was like I was irradiated, like the Incredible <laughs> Hulk. There was gamma ray testing nearby, and I was like, "What's happening to me?" And I, I grew and stretched out, and oh. uh, and it was a freak show. It really, it really was a freak show. And then you beat up those bullies who were. Kicking sand in your face. Well, when you're 6'4 and 140 pounds, you're not beating up anybody. <laughs> they would hit me once and I'd be like, no! You know, fall over. I yeah. mean, I was a well, structural watching, engineer's nightmare. Yes. Yeah. Well, th when they saw me at school, in high school, I arrived and they just looked at me and they said, great basketball player, which, of course, having watched the previous skit, I was not at all. I was always trying to leave the gym as quickly and unobtrusively as possible. They always made me the forward so that I would, you know, my awkwardness would be you right. know, front Right, because center. you need the coordination to go with it. No one ever thinks that. They think if you're just tall, like, well, you're probably a great ball right. player. No. I was like a spider, but, you know, I never actually reached the ball. <laughs> yeah, but so. do you think it's helped you to go through a phase like that in some way? Well, to... I think it's good to be the odd man out, as it were. I think it's good probably for, for an actor or any kind of entertainer to have been, you know, really the, the geek. I think it's helpful. Actually, I never said I was a geek. I was speaking purely oh, about good. myself. Oh, good. Yes, of course, because I don't I know what you were going yeah, through. No, 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 no. I was. I was Joe Suave <laughs> from a very early age. I, I knew that. You know, yeah. that's in your. But I'd bio. like to learn what it was like to be a freak <laughs> from you. Um, but I think it it, um, it was uh, helpful because you often play, you know, people who are odd and it's, right. It's, uh, it gives you, you a remember. vulnerability that you can tap into. Well, I into. think so. I think maybe, yeah. Now, there's talk in this industry of ours that there might be a strike in the next two months or so, and, and people are going to have to stop working. Do you know what, what you would do if, if there was a period where they said, okay, you can't make movies right now, you've yeah. got to stop? you know what you would do? Well, I've been thinking about this, actually. I've been trying to think of something I could do, a legitimate line of work, which, of course, I can't think of anything. But I was thinking, my mother always said, my short mother, my mother always said that I should go to Vegas because I was so tall. I could be like a showgirl and wear lots of feathers and, you know, I could have, I was thinking that, well, I have an idea, actually. Uh, you, would do, you have an idea for something like this? I, I have a small idea because most, mostly I'm known for the alien movies, so I thought I could start in Vegas, if I were to get a theater, I could have a sort of Siegfried and Roy set, you know, the sort of, you know, moonscape, and I could come out as Ripley with a small, I don't know, rhinestone encrusted, you know, flamethrower or something, and I could have <laughs> aliens, you know, kind of jumping around, and yeah. I could be like, you know, doing this, yeah. and we could have suspense music, and A bunch then, of aliens behind you going like this? Yeah, okay. just sort of, you know, right. you know, got, it's a funny Got idea. Got our eye on you, and right. then and then as the evening progressed quickly, hopefully, uh, it would the music would change, and they'd just become like a dance act, you know, and pick me up and twirl me around. I wouldn't actually have to do any dancing; I'd just be carried just from be one moved alien by other to another, people. you know. You know I would go in, see this show. Yeah? yeah. Well, you may be the only one, but uh, this yeah. I was thinking that I could maybe, you know, come somehow like. 
turn this into something for something a couple good. Of yeah, something entertaining. Something and, anyway. Well, a lot of people really do that if they, you know, they go and they try out doing a stage act somewhere. Maybe Atlantic City. <laughs> yeah, <have> no <laughs> something I'll call else Donald first. Trump. Now, yeah. uh, I don't know if this is true. I know that you're a dog lover. You're an animal lover. Yes. And, so, and, and, and someone told me that you had a wedding for your dog. Is that true, or is that just a rumor? No, I'm afraid I, I did. I had a lovely, a very nice wedding for our dog. It was not covered by Dog Bride magazine, but it should have been. <laughs> okay. My dog, w we wanted to breed our greyhound. Right. And my daughter very sensibly said, well, I think if she's going to have babies, they should get married. And we'd met a very nice greyhound named Jimmy. So we decided <laughs> Was that, Jimmy uh, just hanging around the neighborhood? Actually, we met Jimmy at a pet charity. Right. And it was really like their eyes locked across the room. I mean, yeah. it was really, this is a good looking right. greyhound. It's right. like, you know, the Brad Pitt of Italian greyhounds. Right. I'm not right. kidding. You, pr you approved of this greyhound? Well, he, he took my breath away, actually. We'd been looking <laughs> for a long time for Mr. Wright. And he really, and they, they did. They loved each other. Even at the wedding, um, there was a lot going on. There were other dogs dressed up, and um, we had dog champagne, and we had a pre puptual agreement. This didn't really happen. It did. You know, it did. It really happened. You had dog champagne, and you had they, you did. dressed up your dog. We, we actually bought the the dog a very expensive bridal gown, um, because frankly, she's not nearly as pretty, I think, as the husband, and we didn't want him to see that right away. We wanted right. him to be dazzled by this Always day. fool the guy. Yeah. 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 Anyway, um, so we did spend a little bit of money on the bridal gown, and it was a great day, and uh, my daughter, you know, did this. She was the minister, and, you know, bark now or forever hold your peace. And, right, right. And about three months later, she had um, three puppies, very beautiful, healthy puppies, so... And three months is the correct amount of time. There was no monkeying around before the wedding. Oh, you no, know, I'm not sure she... It took her a while to get the idea of what this was all about. She was not that enthusiastic, I have to say. She right. was sort of... I think she would have preferred to go into a convent or something. <laughs> okay. Become a married dog. Yeah, but. yeah. Well, this is... Uh, it's more than I wanted to know. But uh, <laughs> but is this... Um, I, I'm, are you the best, most conscientious dog owner you know? Then it sounds like you are. Well... I, you know, for an apartment dweller, I'm not bad, but I, I, I gave the two sisters of our, we kept one puppy, and I gave the two sister puppies to my agent who lives in uh, Los Angeles and has places to run around. I, I saw the dogs, the sister dogs, actually a couple of weeks ago, and they're, in, they're just gorgeous, muscled, you know, gleaming greyhounds, whereas our little greyhound that we kept is kind of still a little... You know, she's still sort of a runt, and right. so I got the diet. They do different things. They they have a special diet for these dogs, a turkey, and it's all sort of human quality food, and and they do other things too that help the dogs stay healthy, which I haven't done. Like what kind of thing? Well, one of the things they told me about was, um, well, I'm not sure this is true, but anyway, apparently in California the groomer will actually come to where your dogs are and groom them and everything. And then there's something they do <clears throat> with the anal glands, I'm not exactly sure what, um, to keep the dog uh, healthy and smelling very nice. But they didn't exactly show me, and I don't really know where yeah, the anal glands are. You want to be they, shown. Are they inside heard, or outside? I don't know. I know? love that they didn't show I, me. <laughs> I've heard about this anal gland procedure. I must see it. Well, chop, chop. <laughs> I actually was quite interested, but I don't think they've ever done it personally. They leave that to the professionals, you right, see. Right, right. In, in, in California, there are professionals who do that kind who of thing. Who just handle, they have, they drive around a truck and... They're the gland specialists, Anal I gland suppose. specialists. Exactly. That's nice. <laughs> I'll never live there now. Uh, let's talk about heartbreakers. Oh, um, yes. We have... Uh, Tell us just a bit, we have a clip here to show from the movie, and tell us a little bit about it so that right. we know what we're seeing. Well, um... Jennifer Love Hewitt and I play a mother and daughter con artists who find these rich guys and, um, you know, through one disguise or another, get them to fall in love with us, marry us, and then we kind of take them for what they're worth. And uh, in this case, Gene Hackman, who collects Russian art, I'm pretending to be a Russian woman named Olga, and he is playing golf, and he's always saying these very awful things about getting children to smoke at the right. age of nine. and. And my character is a non-smoker. She's a vegetarian. She's she may be a con artist, but she has ethics. You know? Right, right. And so she just has had it at one point, and this is her reaction to something. Okay, let's take a look at this clip from Heartbreakers. 
Smoking is part of the fun of being a kid. <laughs> yeah, we just did some tests on some nine-year-olds. Uh, after a little puking, well, you couldn't drag them away from the stuff. <laughs> yeah, you're only young once. Uh, why not indulge them, I always think. Oh. Oh, darling, what a matter. Head back again. No, no, it's all right, no. That's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun. He's a great actor. Yeah, he's, uh, and he's doing a comedy, which is fun to see him do. You know, he's, he's, He's fantastic at comedy. You know, yeah. he's. Uh, I forget. You know, you forget. And I was watching this, and I was thinking, like, oh, he's doing comedy. And then I remembered he was in the Superman movies, and he was hilarious. Yeah, I think he can do anything. This yeah, uh, the movie's Heartbreakers. It's in theaters now. Sigourney Weaver, thanks so much for it's being a pleasure. here. Pleasure. Great to have you here. Good luck with the movie, Sigourney Weaver, everyone.